Welcome to the topic of vector field visualization. Vector field visualization is an important topic because many applications routinely generate vector data. For example, computational fluid dynamics, climate or ocean modeling, medical applications, and also astronomy, just to name a few. So what is a vector field? Vector field is a domain that everywhere at the position U, there is a vector defined, and the dimensionality of the vectors depends on the domain. For example, in two-dimensional space, uh, we usually write the vector as u and v. In three-dimensional space, we write as u, v, w. Because of the nature of the simulations, vectors are often defined only at the three points as attributes. Actually, flow visualization is an area that has been around for many, many years. Before computer visualization started, scientists and the engineers had been using experimental technique to analyze flows. This is mostly done by adding foreign materials such as bubbles, oils, smoke, etc. One example is that in a wind tunnel experiment, you can pick a location on your object and you continue to inject dye for a period of time. By watching the pattern formed by the dye you inject into the environment, you can understand the flow's pattern and how the pattern changes over time. And this technique is called streak line. And also people use something called timeline. Instead of injecting a single particle, you can place a row of particles, for example, using hydrogen bubbles. And then you follow the front of those particles. And this is called timeline. Also, you can use spatial photography technique. For example, increase the exposure time of the camera. And then you inject a small particle. And you're going to be able to observe the trajectory of the particle in a single picture. Those experimental flow techniques have a strong influence in the computer utilization techniques that I'm going to talk about. Here we can see a few examples of experimental flow utilization courtesy of NASA. The image on the left uses smoke to identify the flow trajectory. And uh, the image on the right, you can see little tufts are placed across the body of the airplane and also is combined with smoke. So you can see the flow pattern close to the aircraft body. And this is another couple examples. We use smoke and a laser lighting sheet in a wind tunnel. And also the image on the right, we use oil-based flow visualization. Numerical flow visualization, that is the topic of this course. We are trying to reproduce what the scientists are used to see in the experimental visualization setting. Methods such as releasing particle, producing streak line timeline will allow the engineers and scientists to easily interpret the result because this is close to what they used to see. The examples here are simple flow visualization techniques. The image at top show arrow plots. So you can see this is similar to the top visualization example I showed in the earlier slide. A lot of time, vector visualization is combined with scalar visualization. So the image at the bottom shows the contours of velocity. So you can see how the speed of the flow changes near the object. This is yet another example of placing small arrows around the airfoil. By observing the direction changes of the segments, you can identify small vertices near the airfoil. And the image at the bottom shows the velocity isocontour. And in this example, you can pay attention to the button image. Instead of only show the isocontour of velocity magnitude or the error plots, we can also trace particles. Based on the vector field generated by the simulation, you can release small particle and we follow the vector direction and move the particle. This will create results similar to what you see in our earlier experimental visualization examples where you use smoke or oil to show the flow patterns. Basically, flow visualization techniques can be divided into three categories. One is geometry-based method, where we bring the point or line primitives from particle trajectories. And those primitives can be 1D objects such as string line, path line, and streak lines, or we can have line variations to increase depth cues. For example, we can create tubes or ribbons based on the 1D line primitives. People also create a sequence of lines and connect them together to form surfaces, and we call this string surfaces. And finally, you can create lines in three-dimensional space and spin volume from those lines and to create something so-called flow volume. 
The second category is to create textures over a surface or three-dimensional volumetric space. Essentially, the textures are created in a way that the patterns follow flow directions. Well-known examples include the line integral convolution technique, or called LIC, and also texture splats. The third visualization techniques are more feature-specific. One example is to extract flow features based on the topology or based on physically meaningful phenomenon. Examples include critical points, that is, where the vector velocity vanishes, vortex cores, that is the center of the rotation in the flow, or other more domain-specific features such as skin friction lines. Below, let me give you some examples that highlight commonly used flow visualization techniques. One is the particle tracing. So basically, it's the most fundamental and still the most popular method. What we do is we use numerical integration schemes, which I will talk about in our next lecture, to compute flow traces. This is done by releasing a particle from an initial C point, and then we follow the particle based on the flow direction. And then after we create this line primitive and we display, particle tracing sometimes people call it local technique because you only visualize the flow starting from the given particle. You do not know what happens elsewhere. To obtain a more global understanding of the data, you need to compute more particle traces. However, for three-dimensional data, displaying a large number of particles traces will create occlusion, make the image more cluttered. The other challenge is that the effectiveness of the particle traces depend on where you drop your initial position, that is particle seeds. So in a way, you need to know the salient regions in the flow field before you start computing your particles. There's a lot of research done in the past in terms of how to select particle C locations. On the computational side, particle traces is computed by numerical integration. When you want to compute a large number of particle traces, it's still not cheap. The other thing is the data access pattern depends on flow direction. Because given an initial C location, the particle can go anywhere in the three-dimensional domain. So unless you analyze the data beforehand, it is difficult to predict where the particle will go, and hence to predict what data are going to be relevant to enable the particle trace computation. After you compute particle traces, just drawing a flat shaded lines on the screen, a lot of times is not very effective. To enhance the three-dimensional cues, we will need to perform illumination computation, that is to shade those particle traces such that the three-dimensional structure can be enhanced. And this is also a subject of research in visualization. This slide just shows that the location where in your particle seeds can create very different visualization. You need to control the density and also the initial location, the distribution of particle seeds, because an inappropriate selection of seed location may give you ineffective visualization. And still, a popular flow visualization technique is to place vector glyphs. That is, at every grid point, you draw a glyph, such as line segments. This allows you to display the entire flow field in a single picture. This is analogous to hedgehogs, that is, you draw line segments over the entire domain. There are still a lot of applications utilizing these hedgehog techniques. For simple flow, this often time is, is quite sufficient. And in visualization research, people have studied some perceptual issue, such as how long, how thin you should place the glyphs so that it's much easier for our vision to pick up the important flow features. And this is the example of texture synthesis. The input of the synthesis technique is a white noise, also the flow direction. And then we perform convolution along the flow line. The final texture is going to create coherence in the image intensity along the flow direction, so it's very easy for us to pick up flow features. And this is sometimes called global techniques because it contains not just individual string lines, it will tell you the flow directions everywhere in the field. This texture synthesis method is particularly effective for two-dimensional flow fields. This is one example of applying two-dimensional texture to a three-dimensional object. If you look at the image closely, you can identify several small edits, and you, you can also identify region that has stray or called laminar flow. And you can compute this in three-dimensional space and then perform volume rendering. And this is just compare between using the flow texture on the right and uh, the traditional line techniques on the left. 
So yeah, as you can see, the texture on the right highlight the global flow directions more effectively. And this is actually also similar to the output of some experimental flow visualization where people apply oil to the surface and send the object to the wind tunnel. And they will get some similar result. That is the pattern formed from this experiment to the these textures that are generated by computers. And finally, animation certainly helps. Not only just place particles to form textures, you can also move the texture along the flow direction, and a lot of times this will create astounding effect. Okay, so this concludes an overview of the flow visualization techniques. In my next video, I'm going to discuss how do we perform numerical integration to compute particle traces.